because people are motivated by a moral conception that um, the state of affairs is um, yeah. not appropriate. And not again, right. again, dumbass, I asked you, why couldn't Marx make that argument even if he approved of capitalism? Okay, imbecile? Of of course so what's the end? Of course he could still make the argument. Great, so then featured, morality, still so then taking, the sorry, idiot. Then, in fact, there's nothing actually normative about the theory, despite what, what you said. No, Shall we go still, over it, it again, still, dumbass? It still feature the morality. Could he make the said. argument? Could he make the argument while approving of capitalism? Yeah, of course. So there's nothing normative about the theory, dumbass. No, that's not true. Does it matter what Marx's moral attitude was? Is there anything in the theory? Yeah, there's, right? there's Marx, and then there's this uh, alternative world Marx that you're imagining, right? We're talking about actual Marx. What he I'm asking you, right, whether Marx's argument would have to be different if Marx approved of capitalism or disapproved of capitalism. Would it have to be different, dumbass? Yeah, it would have to be different. Oh, yeah? And, what, and how does that go? How, how is it that, in, that the predictions of the labor theory of value that capitalism will fail has a normative component to it? Where Marx it, 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 is includes, a it includes normative views about whether, human morality and human behavior. What are you talking about? Where does it do that? In the escalating class tensions and the fact that there'd be social fallout, which capitalists wouldn't be able to afford to amend. Yeah, but again, Marx doesn't have to take a position on that in order to say that it's unsustainable, right? He but does, that's what you're. He does take a position. On I it. didn't ask you that, dumbass. It wouldn't be unsustainable. I if didn't, didn't ask you that, dumbass. I asked you. I am, uh, does he stop interrupting. I asked you, well, dumbass. Listen, if this conversation is not going to continue, if he's dumbass. He's Dumbass, I asked you, right, if Marx has to take a position on whether escalating class tensions is a good thing or a bad thing to argue that cla escalating ca class tensions will necessitate the end of capitalism. Listen, I'm not going to continue the conversation. Of course you're not going to continue the conversation, dumbass, no, because listen. all you're doing is trolling Shut up while I'm talking, asshole. All you're doing is trolling, right? It was pointed out that you were trolling, right? And so now that you've been confronted with a contradiction in your own position, right? You're making excuses for why you're not going to continue the discussion, right? Because you're a complete moron who can't actually defend your position. So go ahead, coward. Go ahead and run away. Right, make excuses for why you can't actually defend your position. Right, because no, the fact I'm is, happy, I'm happy. Sorry, to have the dumbass. If, if you want to have the conversation, let's go over it again. Right, how is it that Marx has to take a position on whether escalating ta class tensions, which his theory predicts, are a good thing or a bad thing, in order to deduce? Right, that capitalism can't be sustained in the long term. That's the question you have to answer, dumbass. So what's the answer? Because that is what is supposed to provide the impetus for there being a worker class revolt against the capitalists, right? If you took it to be the case that that kind of behavior was normal or appropriate, that the capitalist class could just routinely gut the worker class by killing them or getting scabs to fill their jobs when they tried to strike, etc., then you wouldn't be able to get the overthrow of capitalism, right. which Marx does. Is does about. anybody understand what Iron is saying? How that's an answer to the question? Because I'm just not getting it. Right? Mm -hmm. Seems to me you not. can make the same argument, right? If you approved of workers uh, escalating class conflict, right? Or if you disapproved of it. Either way, right? You could say capitalism is doomed. That's not what now, I does anybody? Sorry, dumbass. The question that was asked you was, right? Where has Marx wrote about the, the quest, workers' revolution? The question revolution? that you were asked was, how it is that Marx has to take a stand on whether escalating class tensions is a good thing or a bad thing for his theory to predict that capitalism can't be sustained in the long term, dumbass, right? Now, what's the answer to that question?
Well, Jack, if it's sustainability hinged, if it's sustainability hinged upon social upheavals that Iron's trying to suggest gets in, 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 uh, started due to moral judgments or normative. Could could, could Marx make that argument uh, that it's I'm going? Gonna, uh, to the point, the point is clear. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Jack. The point, the point here is clear, Jack. I mean, like you, right? It might be wrong. Like, just take it like any other physical theory. It doesn't really matter whether or not someone thinks it's wrong or right for the world to work that way. You're just saying that the world works that way. Now, it might be morally wrong that uh, the Earth revolves around the sun, but it doesn't preclude the Earth from revolving around the sun, nor does it preclude any inferences about the Earth continuing to revolve around the sun. So, I mean, it's pretty clear here. Yeah, that's right. I never said anything about that. Oh, you oh, never yeah. said anything about that, dumbass. You said Marx smuggles in moral values in order to make that argument. And yeah, then when confronted, you could... Okay, great. So then you've got to explain to us how it is the case that Marx, in order to make those predictions, has to have a moral attitude, right, of approval of or disapproval of escalating class tensions in order to predict that capitalism is doomed. Yeah, he smuggles in the notion that it's inappropriate to take advantage of workers or to just kill them when they get uppity. Sorry, does sorry, anybody understand yeah. what Iron is saying? Yeah, sorry, sorry. Let, me, let me restate the question. Is there anybody who understands what this imbecile is saying and how that's an answer to that? Well, no. He was, he was just, like, you know, moralizing about Marxist no, yeah, but is that an answer? Is that, exactly. Is, yeah, that's not an answer. Is that, the criticism sorry. only holds as capitalism being unsustainable if you assume those social bores or that or morale. Morale. Yeah, but see, I mean, he hasn't really provided that argument, right? Because the point, the point uh, is, is that whether or not it was right or wrong for there to be escalating class tensions. Um, the class tensions will cause capitalism to fail. That's the claim. And so it just doesn't really make sense why there's any sort of moral... I, I, just, I don't even know where this is. Well, the, the, class, the class tension is contingent on people feeling as though there's something wrong, right? Like somebody's being taken advantage of. What difference does that, that make, idiot? Yeah. That's not the question, as you know, as you know perfectly well, dumbass. The That's question is not about. what. Sorry, idiot. The question is not whether the workers are going to have a moral attitude or not, right? The question was whether the theory, right, has to actually take a stand on whether that's a good or a bad thing in order to predict that it's going to happen, dumbass. That was never my claim. That's nonsense. I'm Sorry, dumbass. I'm not defending your straw man. Now, if that I was never, if that was never your claim, dumbass, right? Why did it take you what, so long, right, to deny it? Discussed? I pointed this out clearly at the beginning of the conversation. Does, does you're anybody busy, recall? You're just too busy yelling, recall, dumbass, to actually listen. Does to anybody what I was recall this imbecile pointing that out at the beginning of this conversation, no. even though the question? was repeated about five times. It seems like he's lying. Who are you lying, Byron? I think he's just, seems being, he's just, like, he's just being purposefully dishonest. Seems he knows. like he's lying. Seems like. <laughs> no, I think it's just better to take away from, from this. No, why lying? Think that, no, no. Yeah. Iron thinks that class tensions are normative. Just take that away. No, that's that the, the, the What does matter. that even mean? It doesn't matter exactly. whether... It doesn't matter whether or not he thinks that, Socrates. The whole point is that... Uh, the theory bereft of any moral prescription predicts the collapse of capitalism, and that's because that's of. That's, oh, so that's now he's not. Now he's saying that it is his claim, even though just a minute ago he denied that it was. So what's it going to be, dumbass? Jack, your editorializing isn't adding anything to this conversation. If you're like, oh. emotionally prepared, and, and so you think your editorializing is adding something, dumbass? Now just let's get it straight. If it's the case that Marx has to approve, right, of workers rising up, right, show us how in order for him to predict that workers will rise up, right, and that capitalism will either be replaced or there'll be a mutual ruination of the contending classes, right? That was, that was never my claim.
Oh, now it's not your claim. That's never been my claim. Yeah. And what did you just say a minute ago, dumbass? Josh was trying to reassert that uh, the criticism would be sound without morality involved in it, and I was just contesting that. Josh, is that what you Squishy, were doing? Turn your mic off. Squishy, turn your mic off. Somebody mute her then? If she does. Um, I'm sorry, Jack. What was the question? Uh, so Iron says. Right, that what you were saying was that morality doesn't have to be involved in order for Marx to make that. And he was saying, he was he was contesting that point. Uh, yeah, that's right. Morality doesn't have to be involved in order for Marx to make that. Point. Now, how is it that he can contest that point? This is the part that I'm not understanding. How is it that he can contest that point, right? If he denies that Mar Marx has to take a position morally on whether it's a good thing for workers to rise up. Because the last time change comes from morality, right? Or are you saying there's something else like mathematical that's going to cause class tensions between the two? So, so how is it that the fact that workers have an attitude, right, and that's important for the prediction, how is it that it follows that Marx has to have that's the morality that I'm saying he smuggles into the That's equation. a very good question, Jack. He smuggles in that workers are going to be annoyed about the way capitalism is going to unfold? Yes. How does he smuggle that in? Because it's A, it's not necessarily the case, and B, it's not necessarily wrong that they're taking advantage of by the capitalists. What difference, what difference does it make that it's not necessarily the case? Well, because if it's not necessarily the case, they could be wrong, right? And if it's a key part of the criticism, then obviously that's going to make his uh, criticism not sound. I, I, think that, uh, uh, I actually think that, I think that even if, even without escalating class tensions, because that's something you can predict just because agents will be taken advantage of, I think he, even without um, escalating class tensions, it's going to be the case that capitalism is unsustainable. Why do, Why do you that? Well, I think because the rate of profit will continue to fall. Yeah, but isn't that just part of the boom-bust cycle? I don't know. I, don't, I think the rate of profit will never increase. What do you it'll mean? Always tend, it'll always tend downwards. It resets with each uh, bust. It, ne it will never reach uh, what it was previously, right? Like, it will always trend. There will always be a downward trend. And as such, I mean, capitalism will always need laborers, right? And so there's a cycle that, uh, that it goes in, right? Um, a new technology is produced. A new labor-saving technology is produced. This causes people to be able to this causes capitalists to be able to uh, to sell products at or near um, at or near the the socially necessary labor time, uh, but but still below it, and so they can sell more products and they can make uh, more of that product, which will cause them to invest. Um, it will cause them to invest in more labor saving technologies so they can make more profit. But that obviously. Uh, is going to terminate when we, you've created labor-saving technology such that you no longer need workers. Then you can't have capitalism because you don't because uh, labor is what produces value. Yeah, but you could just have those machines destroyed in large-scale conflicts, like World War II destroyed so much manufacturing power and machines that they had to employ workers after the fact which gave the surviving workers from the war the opportunity to have like really good paying jobs, right? So like, I'm not sure why you think that during this collapse, the boom bust cycle, that all these machines are just going to survive the ensuing conflict. It's just not in the capitalist's interest. Well, yeah, I don't of course, think, it's not in their interest that their factory is bombed, but it still happens. I don't think it, anything turns on that, though, right? Because the point is, is that something normative has to be smuggled in. Right, right. Right. Yeah. I, I agree. 
Yeah, and that would I just not understanding. Well, Marx proposed that people would uh, become increasingly dissatisfied by these conditions. Yeah, but that's not smuggling anything normative, yes, right? That's is, a psychological claim. How is that smuggling in anything normative? He well, can make that claim whether he approved of it or disapproved of it. If you had been paying attention and not just name calling and over talking me, you would have heard that I specifically said both human behavior and morality. I said that yeah. he smuggled those things in. Yeah, that's not answering the question. That's just repeating the claim, claim dumbass. What we asked you was, how is that? Josh, 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 you're echoing like a motherfucker. Yeah, but he's contradicting himself, right? I mean, he, if he says it's smuggling in human behavior, and we didn't deny that, when he, I mean, he's both shifting the goalposts in and contradicting himself because we were saying, we were in agreement when saying that it predicts escalating class tensions, which is, uh, which is human behavior, right? Escalating class tensions is human behavior. And so we were already accepting that, right? And then he says it smuggles in um, human behavior, but we never denied that. So there's no reason to bring that up. It's just contradictory. Yeah, because Josh, it, don't forget it smuggles in normative claims about human behavior. Normative. What's the normative claim that it smuggles in about human behavior? I don't that the uh, workers are being taken advantage of and that's amoral or that um, non-cooperative venture, et cetera, those kinds of things. That doesn't follow. He could say, right, that if he says workers are going to feel taken advantage of, right, he doesn't have to take a stand on whether they are being taken advantage of. So that's just stupid. That's not my contention. Again, you're misunderstanding my contention. So again, stupid person. Let's try to get this straight. Is it the case that Marx could make that prediction, right, without thinking that the workers are being taken advantage of just by Again, imputing to workers? Sorry, idiot. Sorry, idiot. That. I wasn't done talking, idiot. Okay, Who are you idiot. talking to? I'm talking to Iron. 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 So, idiot. Question is, could Marx make that prediction? How the fuck is this by, black belt? Could Marx make that prediction, what? right, Sorry, could Marx make that prediction by simply imputing to workers that they will feel taken advantage of rather than thinking that they are being taken advantage of, dumbass? Jack, why are you asking me that question? Sorry, does anybody know Iron's answer to that question? He's going to say you that know. there's some moral stuff smuggled in by saying that. You know, how is there? I'm just not there getting it. You're asking me about a claim that I, make. I don't understand why. universe of Iron can does yeah, anybody understand what... Can somebody explain to me what Iron's position is? Um, he's saying that if when he denies the claim that class tensions are normative and therefore capitalism is doomed, when he says um, class tensions are normative, therefore class tensions are doomed, he's saying therefore is normative. I don't get it. No, well, I'm not, not do why, because I'm he not already denies that normative. class tensions aren't... He denies that class tensions are normative, but if Marx is only saying that class tensions leads to the fall of capitalism, then somehow there's normativity in there, right? So either well, let me wait. Himself, so let me just get normative. let me just get this clear, Socrates. Am I wrong that Iron said right that Marx has to argue that workers are being exploited, right? And that's a moral notion in order to argue that workers will rise up. No, you're not wrong. Okay. Now, if it, I don't see, here's the part I'm not understanding. Why is it the case that Marx has to actually think that um, this process, right, is a good or a bad thing in order to argue that workers, right, will be unhappy about it and will ride up, rise up? Do you understand? The, no, I think he's being cut. That's not my claim. So, wait. He's now saying it's not his claim. What do you make of that? Um, before, when he was talking about how he, or at least when he characterized Marx's argument, he said specifically, talking about the exploitation of workers smuggles in moral uh, morality, right? Now, I'm not quite sure how that's even possible when he agreed that class tensions aren't normative, but somehow it is. So, Jack, the answer I have for you is talking about the exploitation of workers is inherently normative. Yeah, but that just seems like pure idiocy. 
I don't disagree with that either, Jack. So, but that is what he's saying. It can't be exploitation without there being some normative standard of the exchange between the two classes. But he doesn't have to argue that he doesn't have to have a moral notion of exploitation, right? He can just say, right, that exploitation is the expropriation of the differential between the value of labor power and the total value that workers produce, right? What is expropriation? Now, if he says, if he says on that basis, right, that workers are not going to be happy about, right, increasing exploitation, right, defined in that manner, how is there anything moral there? Well, why would they be upset? What difference does it make? The point is, you're saying he has to smuggle in a moral notion, right? All he's doing is making a psychological claim about workers. How is that smuggling in a moral? Yeah, I covered that in one of the two problems. Like it's just, like it's, just uh, it's just a mistake to ask him those types of questions, Jack, because he knows. He, I mean, he knows that he's just being dishonest, right? He knows that. I'm not. He's just. Saying, he's just saying directly. Uh, things that you've already responded to, he's just negating them, and now his claim is just something amorphous. I mean, Joe asked him to write it out. He wouldn't actually write it out. All know? right, well, maybe what we should do is just make sure that there's no ambiguity on this point for any of the hearers, right? Right, right. So, uh, so is, there anybody, is there anybody who actually No, that's thinks, a bad idea also. Why? Because we're going to get tasteless you're gonna, and yes, Dionysus? You're going to get bootlickers involved in the conversation. Yeah, yeah, well, involved. We, can just, we, can just, we can just ignore tasteless if he pipes up, right? Because nobody's going to care anyway, right? So anybody who's not an idiot, come forward, right? <laughs> and explain to us whether you have any doubt in your mind that Iron has been trolling this whole that's, time. That's kind of poison the well, Jack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is poisoning yeah. the well. <laughs> the well has been so poisoned. So is a long is time there anybody trial. is there anybody here who doesn't think that iron is um trolling has been trolling this whole time? This is a classic uh, jack tactic. There is just iron, trying to make people feel lost. Is. I asked Sorry, you to read like, the argument. Jack, I think the answer to your like question is no. Have there been like several arguments here like it's hard to say what the actual argument was. There have been Notice how Iron uh, deflects no. the question away from the room in order to attack Jack okay, because he Logan, knows that's great. That's great. that a lot that's of people need to be Jack. That's great. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. but Joe, yeah. like, would also, you Joe... write it out. But why would you care, Joe? Why? <laughs> Look at just, this point. Let it happen. Write it out and not like, not just trolling you guys. Yeah, let it happen. That's my clarity of Iron's claim. How does that change anything? When a person resorts to this oh, tactic, Jesus this obviously <laughs> that he cannot fucking take. Hey, Joe, are you there? Is it, is, so it is it strange that like Iron is willing to, to talk and text a lot, talk and voice chat a lot, but the one thing, the one thing we want him to actually write out, he just refuses to do. Yeah, he just repeated the claim like we weren't clear about the claim. 